yeah, then I quickly catch up again. Okay, the, the, I started with the motivation. Why are we doing it? Um, we're doing this because we now have our Docker image somewhere in the cloud and we have um, our computing, our cluster computer, uh, computers somewhere in the cloud and now we need to link up both and we'll do this using Slurm. And um, here I already logged into SSH and I would invite everyone to do so maybe at home later um, at your own pace. So I already started a screen session. So in case the window breaks, I don't know, I can resume our progress. And um, at first I want to demonstrate the difference between execution via Slurm and not executing uh, using Slurm. So here I have the first command, this is hostname. And if I type it, it will give me the name of the current host that I'm running my program at. So as you already can see here, at the beginning of, of the prompt, um, I'm under the BitterWeb uh, entry node, the SSH entry gateway. And this is not where we can execute our neural networks through our training. But with just four characters more, we can already execute on another server. And this is on the Gamma Web, the strong, powerful uh, Gamma Web uh, GPU server by just using S1. And what this does is, um, or might at first look like setting up SSH sessions, like, I don't know, SSH, um, gamma web 07, and then running the, the, the command. But this is not equivalent, right? Um, what S1 here really does is it schedules a job. It waits for resources, resources to be assigned to you. And then runs the um, process or the program that you specified on the server and then gives you the output. Um, I will click, quickly demonstrate something that um, yeah, goes a bit further into the direction of, of yeah, SSHing into um, the execution node. And this is this interactive shell. I quickly type this in and then explain what it does. So you already know this S1 scheduling command. Then a bash is just a shell. So we can type new commands in later. And this minus i here is belonging to bash as an uh, argument and makes bash itself interactive. So we can type in more stuff. But we also need to enable S1 to be interactive. So communicate back and forth with us, and we do this using PTY. Let me do that. And now I again have a prompt here, but as you can see, the prompt name or the server name changed. And indeed, we can verify that we are now on Gamma Web 07. So we have some kind of pseudo uh, SSH connection there, which we could use. But again, this is not SSH. This is a job that is scheduled. And this also means that we are taking up resources right now. So um, I'll quickly do something I just wanted to do later, but I can also do it now. Ah, OK. You are all, all <laughs> already joining in. So SQ shows all the jobs that are currently being scheduled. And you can see. Um, Ah, this is me over here. So um, I'm already blocking some resources despite not doing anything right now, right? I'm just connected to the server. And this is also the answer to this question. Why can this become problematic? Uh, let me quickly rejoin the screen session. Yeah, I mean, if everyone just opens these sessions all day long, never closes them. I mean, we are even in a um, screen session so even if I would close the window, nothing would change. And uh, yeah, we would be all blocking up resources. So don't do that. Um, we didn't get to install measures that could prevent this. So you can uh, restrict how many users can, can run how many processes at the same time and use uh, what resources. But we didn't, didn't do this quite rigorously um, at the moment because I don't also think that this is necessary in the end. But 
So I want you to learn how to exit these sessions and how to get out of this interactive mode. And this is no surprise. Uh, it's just the default bash exit command. Exit, bam, and you're back out of there. And if you can have a look at this SQ here, you can see I'm um, nowhere to be seen again. So we went out there. Okay, executing containers. This is why we're doing this. At the moment, we are just on the default installation of Gamma Web 07, but nothing yeah, from our own Python version or no, no custom containers yet. But we want to change that. We want to run our custom container, or at least the container that Lucas built. And I already sent you or put, put in here this link, and this will be relevant for you because if you build a private container or a private repository that has a private package built, then you will be not be able to check it out on the server because this GitHub doesn't know that it's you on the server when you try to check out this container. So please go there and quickly generate an access token just with the read packages permission. And then we can use this command. It's best if you just copy it from, from the homepage um, to upload it to the server. Can also maybe yeah, increase the size a little. So we create a special file at a special location. And I mean, config directory, that's good. But uh, in an nroot folder, what is nroot? nroot is a plugin for um, for Slurm, and it actually handles containers for you, and will handle um, container management, uh, opening the containers. Uh, will handle especially also the file system later. We will see that because we can do almost everything without mounting. It's in the zip file, I think. The zip file at the bottom of um, the um, home page. Maybe you need to refresh. Um, okay, there, there you can find it, find it and just, just copy. Then this is quite important because um, yeah, on the server we didn't restrict permissions yet or at all. So make sure that you don't share your credentials with others and just um, yeah, change the permissions. To, to um, so that only you can access and not um, others in the user group or general others. And then, yeah, this echo command here gets piped into this file and you need to adjust those values here. Just type in your, ah, this is Docker Hub. Over here, your GitHub username and your GitHub access token, and then those will be used to log in into ghcr.io, which is the GitHub container registry. Yeah. Um, maybe I should that you would also only need to do one of the two, depending on whether you want to use Docker Hub or GHCR. You can set up both, but if you only go yeah, you can... with GHCR, you can also mm -hmm. just use the last one. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, repeat quickly. Yeah, you can, of course, choose whether you want to have both uh, set up or just choose one or the other one. Uh, no problem. Just keep in mind that um, if you want to pull from the GitHub uh, repository or uh, container registry, you need this line in that file. Okay, I'll not show you that here because there's my token, but um, I think you can imagine how this file will look now and what this will do. Okay, running a container. Um, in the meanwhile, I will do this with a default Python container, which is just Ubuntu with Python installed, but without GPU capabilities. So we'll get away from that in a minute, but let me quickly demonstrate how this works. So S1 again, now we can specify a container image and this will get automatically pulled from the default Docker registry, with, which is in this case is Docker Hub. Again, interactive PTY bash I, that didn't change, but we also have this memory argument, which gives us RAM memory, uh, which is actually needed here because the image that we want to pull is quite large. Okay, let me do that. Oh. 
maybe we we are overloading the file system with this if everyone is doing that at the moment but uh, Okay, may, may take some time, but um, again, in there, we can then run this Python 3 command and just use Python as, as we would. But again, this makes no sense, right? Because we are on a GPU server and we are not using GPU here. What is happening there in the background? Okay, so if we specify this container image, then every time we type this S1 command, this image get, gets pulled from fresh or from, yeah, from, from the registry, gets instantiated in your file system, gets copied there, gets booted up. Ah, no. And then, yeah, you can use it here and have your Python 3.8 running. Okay, let me exit and get out of the image. And now, if you run SQ, then you can see that here, I'm still showing up in the first line, um, but with this CG state, which is, uh, what's, garbage. sorry? Garbage collected. garbage collected, I think, yeah, it's something else. Uh, just these closing or it's some, okay, but, but it basically means that um, it's yeah, cleaning up behind me because, Every time that I finish S1, when I did the command that I did, um, it has to clear up the whole container. Not good. So we'll change that in the next command here. Um, we are using container name right now. And container name actually allows us to permanently store, or well, permanently, at least, at least uh, midterm permanently, store the container instance on our um, file system. Maybe there's, there's been some question here. Okay, no. Um, yeah, start on our file system. And the only thing that's new here is this container name. And if you just specify this, then it's the, the, um, uh, the Slurm instance already knows that we have to download this and store it permanently. But currently, everyone is doing this, so it's overloaded. But um, OK, we don't have to do this now. Um, you can all imagine it basically looks the same. The same thing is happening. Um, but uh, OK, then I'll explain what's happening here. The advantage of us doing this with container name is that if we specify container writable as well, that we can change the image magically. Well, the image is then instantiated and lies somewhere in the file system. And you can change this image lying there. And just if you, if you try to import NumPy for, NumPy, for example, it's not installed. But you can install it using pip exit the container, so everything is shut down again on, on a Slurm level, and then start it up with the exact same some command. Well, here we didn't even have to specify container image, because if you specify container name, and this had been done before with the same name under your account, then it's just booting up the very same image instance that we had before. So if you do this here, then you have an image that has NumPy installed. You will see that when you run this command. So there are some advantages for this, like you being able to simply install some additional software without rebuilding the whole Docker image. That, that's very convenient and you can store it and boot it up later. The disadvantage, of course, is that uh, it's not reproducible. So later, you run into the danger of not knowing what you've been doing. And um, then you basi basically have to do everything again if you want to deploy this on a different account or a different um, platform, different server. So don't do that or at least um, know about that um, or know about the consequences of doing that. 
So what if you ruined the image? So you deleted some files, because you can do this, container writable is on. Um, and then this container name would be wasted, right? You would have no way of ever deleting this and setting it up again. Well, you have. These are the commands that you can use there. Um, basically, it's enroot commands. So here we have this enroot again, the Slurm plugin handling our containers. And if you would just run the latter part and would list, you would see that it's not um, working because enroot is not specified or not, not, yeah, not intentionally set up on the SSH gateway, but if you use S1 import, it works. Um, or it would work if we wouldn't have overloaded the network right now, but yeah, here you can see all the jobs that have, or the, the containers that instances that have been there previously. Well, let's talk about this weird Pixis prefix. So Pixis is another Slurm plugin that handles um, the container downloads. Um, so every time Pixis downloads a container from a registry, it adds this prefix. So if you want to remove the container that we've just built, you use this command here. This F um, tells it to not ask for confirmation again, are you sure, but just uh, forces to remove. And if you've done this, then you can freshly download uh, a new container image and instantiate it under this name again. And it also clears up uh, file space. Okay, so now we've been working with this Python image, but we want to use our cool image that we built from our Docker file. And we can use this command to do it. Uh, uh, make it a bit larger here. Yeah. Um, so you already know this part. The memory is set to 32 gigabytes here because uh, the whole container has to be, be fit in, in memory at one time. Um, but I mean, this is just for a short uh, time, so it will be fine. We use the enroot command again here, but not this time to list or remove an image, but rather to import it, to explicitly force it to download it. But we don't download it into a Pixis uh, space, but rather download it into a so-called squash file. And this squash file is, well, a one file representation of your image lying in your local file system. So, um, yeah, here you can type in all your credentials. Here, in this case, we use ghcr.io for the GitHub container registry. And then your username, your repository name, and the branch, which might be main in the default case. And I would also encourage you to name this output uh, 20ng.squash because we will use this later. Let's see whether I did this. Um, yeah, I did it here. So uh, we can go ahead and we can instantiate a new container just from this image file. Let's do it. Maybe wait again for resources, but, uh, but I mean, it's, it's nothing new now, right? Um, <laughs> you can all imagine what would happen if it, uh, was to go, go through. Maybe that's the time to ask some questions for you. Okay, no questions. And Lucas has a question. Um, just for everyone who hasn't done the GitHub Actions part, I will put the link to the publicized by image now. Oh. You should be able to use it. I will just put it in the Zoom chat. Okay, thank you, Lucas. I, I'll repeat what you said. Lucas will put um, the link to, uh, you can see it here, right? No, you can't because it's not screen chat, but uh, the link to uh, his published image 
um, is put to the Zoom chat now, and you can just download it from there. Uh, who has another? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I was asked to further elaborate on what happens, what really happens in detail when you run S1. Well, S1 takes the command that you type behind that as an argument, remembers that, and then thinks about which container are you trying to use. If you're trying to use the container, like you specified it with container image, container name, then it sends or it calls up the Gamma Web 07 node, the GPU node, and tells it, yes, please, in the background, instantiate or run this Docker, Docker image. Set up this, you, know, you can imagine it as, as a virtual machine or operation system in the background. And then inside that, run this command. And then deliver me the outputs. Outputs will be um, yeah, comment uh, line outputs. And then, then these gets forwarded back again to you. So this is what S1 does. It's, it feels really close to SSH but it's scheduling a job, which can also mean that things happen like here. The job gets queued, so it, it's in a waiting queue, and then only later gets allocated resources and runs. Okay, uh, we got through here. So we now have our container running, and we can quickly just test whether we have everything, Python 3, and then import, um, for example, this one. This was part of the requirements. Let's see. Yeah, OK, it doesn't throw an error, so it works. <laughs> ah, now it finished. Yeah, our file system is a bit slow at the moment. OK, that works. So now let's stay in here to download the data set. So, um, last week, we promised you that we'll be continuing with the very same model that we had built. But I noticed that it's a bit slow because we are using Distilbert to extract embeddings, but we are extracting them each and every time that we run anything. And we'll later do hyperparameter sweeping where, we'll be, uh, where we will train the network like 100 times in a row. And it would be inefficient to each and every time compute for each epoch and each sample compute the embeddings again. Um, also, because we are not retraining the distilled bird, this would be an, a different thing. But here we're just keeping it, keeping it fixed and at the beginning of the network. So we can just apply it on the data before export the data set that is resulted from this, which contains embeddings, and then use this data set to pipe it into our new model, which is just the same model head that we defined last week. Which means for you, it feels like we're having a new, completely new data set, which can be downloaded using this command. But in the end, it's just the data set that we've been having before, but with pre-computed embeddings to make everything go fast. So yeah, we didn't have uh, unzip in uh, the image previously, so we would need to install this here. But we can because we said container writable, so it works. Then let's go to the home directory, download the zip file that I uploaded, and uh, um, replace it. Ah, I already did it. And then uh, we have everything unpacked and available in our home directory. And now we can go out of the container again. So now I like to quickly, uh, we have two cells left. Yeah, quickly talk about the difference between what we just did and using GPU hardware. So the idea of Slurm is that you have to explicitly request hardware that you would need. You already noticed this with the memory. Um, you would have to explicitly request the memory, but you also have to do this with GPU resources. And you can do it using this argument here. So to try this at home, please, just run this command and you will see that you don't have any GPU resources available. 
But if you run this, then you will see that there's one graphics card, one CUDA device available for you that you can use. And here you can see the specifications, which is um, a five gigabyte um, slice of our A100 instance or, or graphics card that we have installed. Yes. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it's um, so this one G in here, um, that's rather complicated, but it's um, it's part of the specification of the chunking of our A100. So the idea is that in this server, we have um, very powerful graphics card that are way too overpowered purposes that we're using here right now and also way too few to um, be sufficient for all of you because if you would request one graphics card as a whole then only four people could do this and the cluster would all be already be full so uh, this is why we chunked them into five gigabyte chunks you can also do this with 10 or 20 gigabytes and then you have to specify how many uh, or how much execution power is given to those. Um, I'm not the very best expert on this, but this is what this 1G does. It basically also chunks the, the yeah, execution power into the smallest part available. But you will have to use ex exactly this because this is the only value that we allowed you to use uh, on this cluster here. Okay, but thanks for the questions. Yeah, and now as a last thing that I want to say, this this over here will be uploaded as a video later this week, um, is running the training actually. And I provided a file to you running unparametrized, which is basically the same as we already did, but it starts at a different point. So we start with loading the data set again, of course, this is the same batching and shuffling everything. Um, but here at the input, we don't uh, input the tokens, but we input the embeddings, the 768 uh, unit vectors of float, which are generated or output by the uh, transformer network architecture. And then this is basically the same again, the same head architecture, same compilations, same callback, early stopping, and the same model fit. Um, so basically everything stayed the same, but I made the pre-processing a bit easier for you. And yeah, I would invite you to take a minute, maybe this week, and run this command and um, see how the network performs and gets trained it's rather quick so maybe like 30 seconds so um yeah just try it out then i maybe want to explain quickly the difference to s batch um, so with s1 you would have to keep the window or the screen session open to have it executed this is like ssh again but with s batch you don't have to with s batch it runs in the background and how do you stop the process again? Like if you run an infinite loop, for example, well, you do what I did all the time. You run SQ, you see the jobs there, and then you just run a uh, type S cancel, and then your job ID. But this is not my job, so I should not have permission. Yeah, I don't have permission to kill this, but you can kill your own jobs and free up resources doing that. And also your jobs will be killed after, I think, at the moment 50 hours but we will probably set it down to something like two hours which means that in the end when you're training neural networks you will have to use checkpointing checkpointing and then uh, you can restart the training and continue from the checkpoint that you created okay that's as far as i wanted to get i think we're done um, yeah, maybe maybe take your time for some questions if you have any. Also, we know that this is a lot to take in and also to try out and maybe try at home. So at some point, if you run into any issue, just write us on Discord or also have office hours. Yeah, we have. Ah, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. So everyone who didn't do the task until 
uh, last Friday got a uh, yeah maybe a bit nervous making email from me. Um, well, in the end, we did this task also to see how many people we actually have here because next week there will be, I think next week there will be this project fair where we want to introduce to you some project that you must take um, for the seminar, but we need to know how many people are still around. So this is also why I required you to do this. And to those who didn't do this, I offered to get to our office hours, which is just right after the lectures in P819, but you can see this on the website. And uh, yeah, everyone else is of course also invited if you have any questions or problems with the lecture in, ge in general or the lab or the tasks, or you just want to talk to us, um, just feel free to come after this lab or yeah, weekly at this slot and approach us there. Okay, so any questions from the Weimar side maybe? No, I don't think so. No. 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 Yeah. So ne next week, uh, I think we'll skip the uh, lecture part, as Benno said, and we'll be back here. Um, if, if that's also okay with Yannick, we'll be back here at 15.30 for um, the project fair. Uh, one question, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, um, I will. So it's important. Yes, I agree. But it may be something that you will not use in the, your, your projects. So I will put this in a video and upload it. But I would really encourage you to watch this video because this is something also if you get in industry later, this will be something that you will definitely use. And if you get in research, this will be something that you will, of course, use. So um, yeah, please watch the video that I will upload or Lucas will upload for me. And uh, but thanks for the question. Yeah. Okay, thank you, everyone. Yeah.